Here we go. It's just got to start. There we go. This is Jackie, and I'm talking to Tatiana De Maria. Tati, it's been uh, since 2018 since we last spoke. Yeah. Warp Tour, New Jersey. So what if or, or Virginia? I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what day it is. They all blend. They all blend. Yes. All the Warp Tour shows blend. This just feels like an extended Warp Tour, but at home. It does. So what has gone on for you since Warp Tour? It's been a while. Uh, since 2018, well, I finished Warp Tour and then went and played a show at the Whiskey in LA, the Whiskey A Go Go. And we shot a concert film there and um, put out episode one of a comic book, which was really fun. Some guys over at Marvel, some artists and writers turned me into a superhero for a comic, which was really fun. So we co-wrote that and we've been building that up since then, actually. And then uh, and then I went back into the studio, played some shows here and there. The 25th anniversary of Warp Tour in Atlantic City, which was a fucking blast. And then I've just been working on finishing the album. So I've got some singles coming, obviously had to shift a few things up timing wise with releases and with tours. I was about to announce a bunch of shows and a bunch of releases. So pushing all of that back, we'll see how 2020 goes, but there is an album to come and I am going to be releasing a single, I think in the next few weeks, I'm rushing to kind of crank it out and uh, make up for the fact that I won't be touring this month. Sounds like you've been very busy since we last spoke and where are you <laughs> yeah. located today? Today, well, I got quarantined in New York, so um, stuck here. I'm in Brooklyn. It's lovely. Sun's shining. Can't complain. Uh, it's been pissing it down the last few days, so I'm very envious of everyone who's stuck in California. But uh, touch wood, everything's all right so far. And um, I'm in good health. How are you doing? How are you holding up in Corona Land? Good. I am outside of D.C. Again, I'm looking outside. The sun is shining. And so it's just weird to be in this situation where it's, like, very serious and ominous, but... Because, thankfully, it's not going on in front of my face, it doesn't feel as serious. Although, I'm glad, at least in at least in the East Coast, I feel like we're finally taking things more seriously. Yeah, we're going on a bit of an extended quarantine. Um, we kind of decided to hop off the grid a week early. It kind of just seemed like it was, it was going that way. So, we're, I think I'm on 25 days of quarantine so far. But I have to say, I'm really, really lucky because I work from home a lot and I have a studio at home. So I'm writing, I'm producing, I'm mixing, I'm finishing tracks, getting things ready. So my day to day hasn't changed other than the fact that I'm not traveling as much, which is actually a bit of a relief. Aside from that, you know, obviously there's a lot of people. I have a lot of friends who are sick and a lot of people who are trying to push through a lot of friends who've lost work. Um, And obviously there are doctors on the front line who need support. So kind of doing whatever we can, whenever we can, just to do our part but otherwise feeling very very lucky that I get to still work from home and not change up too much I I like that you you've got a good positive mindset uh you did are you still um releasing a single in April I have a yes information I have a title uh without you is that oh oh when does this interview come out uh you can tell me when it comes out and then I'll (laughs) put it out then I just am given the information. Yeah, yeah. Basically, um, it wasn't going to come out till a bit later, but decided that it was, there was there were a few things I was going to release, but I was like, mm, it's, an, it's a single I wanted to put out and uh, kind of figured let's, let's just go for it now. Um, so yes, Without You will be coming out. I <laughs> would confirm the date with you, but we're still submitting everything to our distributors today and tomorrow. So just trying to get everything done, get all the artwork in. And, you know, I wish I wish it was as straightforward sometimes as just chucking it online and having it go out there on the same day. But whenever you go to release something, you know, for people who might not know, you go through your distributors. It is a two to a three week process. So even when you decide to release something, your distributors generally ask for four weeks ahead of time. So, you know, it's kind of putting everything in the system, getting it out there. Um, but, yeah, I'm very excited. I haven't released a new single in a while, so I can't wait. Excellent. So what inspired the writing behind <laughs> Oh, we're going to have to have this conversation once you've heard the song again. No okay. sneak peeks, no teasers, man. Although, <laughs> except, except for hearing it a little bit, I'm doing um, live shows every Sunday on my Instagram at 5 p.m. Eastern. So I gave a little bit of a sneak peek last week, and uh, I'll probably be playing the full thing acoustic this Sunday. Cool. So I think a lot of artists have used technology and social media to connect with fans. Is it easier or more difficult because you can't see them eye to eye? 
do you know what? <clears throat> I found it really enjoyable because I think seeing people eye to eye is one thing and you get so used to it over the course of time, but actually hearing what people are thinking while you're playing a song is something you're never privy to. So you can look at a crowd and be like, I think they're loving this or I think they're hating it and never really know. And a lot of the time you only really get to see the front two rows because you've got spotlights in your eyes. So <clears throat> what I love is I love more intimate shows in general. Just when I get to play small acoustic shows, it's great because I get to just go fuck with the crowd, hang out with people, get up close and see their faces. Online, what's really cool is you just get people's thoughts. You get a stream of consciousness. It's sometimes you're trying to remember the words and you're playing, and you're reading comments at the same time. It's like tapping your head and rubbing your stomach. But it's, uh, it's been really, really nice to just get people real time and be able to connect on that level, which I love. It is weird, obviously, you finish a song, bone dry silence, see a bunch of digital hearts pop up, but it's, you can't, you get used to it. And I think we're all so used to communicating on social media that it makes sense. Um, but I do enjoy it. There's so much less set up. It's a lot more intimate. There's no curfew times. There's no venues to deal with. I mean, I, I love it. I love playing in a venue and not to say it's hard to deal with venues, but what I mean is load in, load out, set up, sound check. It's a wonderful feeling to play with a full band, but I found it equally enjoyable to just switch your camera on, know you get to connect with anyone who's there, know that if you're playing Texas on one night, people in England aren't pissed that you're not playing England or the other way around. Whoever wants to tune in can tune in. And there's so much freedom with just doing something on your phone that you know obviously the sound quality for me i'm going to be anal and be like oh how is this coming out but um because it's a, it's a microphone on my phone but they're surprisingly good and i've enjoyed it i'm really enjoying it a lot more than i thought i would and uh, i'm absolutely loving it that's great i think you know your sound it it lends itself more to that versus um, I've, I've also interviewed djs and, and heavy metal artists and it's like yeah i they don't have that luxury. Mm. Um, so I do I do think have you seen DJ Nice's sets and uh, Diplo? No. Fucking hell. DJs are actually killing it at the moment. Like Diplo's doing a free set every single day, which I love. And honestly, I found that super enjoyable as well. This is a person watching and DJ Nice killed it. Great music. If you get the setup right, I'm just saying, DJs out there, don't be pulling a cop out, man. Get your shit together and do it because DJs are killing it right now and I'm loving it just doing two hour, five hour sets. People are just going for hours and I think it's great. I think it's really great. That's amazing. I I, I love that, you know, despite all the madness, we're becoming even mm. more creative and, and finding ways to reach out to people. And that's awesome. Yeah, man. I mean, look, I would love, I would love to know that my bassist is like rumbling your tits while we're playing the show and that my drum is pounding you in the chest and that my vocals are filling the room and that my guitar is crunchy. Obviously, I'd love that. We all have to make a bit of a sacrifice, but <clears throat> heavy metal bands too, man. They can strip that back and do acoustic versions. I would love to hear that. Can you imagine some of those fucking harmonies, acoustic, be sick? I think they should. I, I do think, you know, they should be brave and, and give it a shot. What else are y'all yeah. doing? Fuck <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. If I'm sitting here with my acoustic, pull yours out, boys. I agree. So when when things finally lift, whenever that is, where's the first place you're going to go? <clears throat> That's a good question. Um, I, had a, I had a flight booked for Barbados last week. I was going to take myself there for a few days, but uh, that's not happening. Um, I might take a few days to go to the beach, or I think I might just... I mean, it really depends on travel. Ideally, I'd like to go see my family, so I might head straight back to England. Um, or I, uh, depending on shows and dates, you know, I know that I had some stuff to do out on the West Coast. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I don't know yet. It really sort of depends on timing. What about yourself? Do you have any plans? Uh, I had to cancel my spring break, so I'm going to find a beach because I feel like by the time this finally ends, it's going to be summertime anyway. So... Mm. I'm going to hug some sand as tightly as I can. <laughs> Imagine many beast destinations will see really pale motherfuckers showing up and just being like, oh, I haven't been outside in four months. We're all yeah. going to char. I'm ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So with everything else going on, canceled tour plans, things on hold, where do you find hope? Hope? I mean... <clears throat> I don't think I'm necessarily so actively looking for hope. I think uh, I think it's important for people to take care of themselves and to take care of their loved ones. I think that 
every generation goes through some kind of upheaval. I think if you know, if we look back in history from whether it's influenzas, um, diseases, viruses, war, uh, my parents, um, you know, were were caught in a civil war and I've, there's a lot of war in many generations of people's families. And I think, um, which is also why I was raised in England. So I think there's always some kind of upheaval and the fact that we're very, very lucky to be living better than some kings were, you know, a hundred years ago, the fact that we have heating and technology and grocery stores and food, I think we're really, really lucky. Um, it's hard. It's obviously not like anything we're used to. So it is an upheaval for us in general. And of course, you know, there are sirens, more and more sirens every day in New York. There are people suffering. There are people um, who are passing away, uh, people who are very sick. There's a lot of it that's, that's very daunting in that respect. So it's not to trivialize it. It's to say that I don't see it as as a bleak ending to our existence is more what I'm trying to say. I see it as something we just have to get through and overcome, much like a lot of other upheavals. And I think we all have to take care of each other. I think we all have to look out for each other. And I think... Um, be patient and be strong and find ways to occupy our time. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm very, very lucky in that I can stay home and write and go, okay, well, I might as well keep myself busy by writing. I might as well give people more music. For me, it's, there's a massive rush I get from knowing that I can put something out there and people will get joy out of it. And maybe it sounds cheesy, I don't know, but when I was growing up, listening to music was, <clears throat> I could just breathe better. When my favorite bands put out songs, I was just like, fuck. This is oxygen for me. So knowing that when you put something out to whatever level people are going to enjoy it, that they have something new to kind of latch onto, it's a really good feeling. And then I just believe it will pass. I think it will pass and we'll, we'll figure it out. And, you know, step by step, we are figuring it out. Uh, but in the meantime, a lot of people are out of work. So I'm doing different shows online to raise money for different charities, helping to support different people. Um, and, you know, just hoping that, the doctors are able to stay safe and, and do their jobs, you know. What are some of the charities that you're raising funds for? Um, well, there's the CDP is the main one. I've kind of been going just relief funds because that they work with a bunch of NGOs across the board. So I think that that's, that's kind of the easiest, most straightforward place to go. And then we're setting up a few more shows now um, with different, there's different charities. Uh, one of the shows this week that I'm not allowed to say because they haven't, they're sort of between two right now, so we're confirming, but that's a different avenue. Um, there's also friends who are out of work, a lot of people who are in the music community who are going to tour, and they're sort of dependent on current active jobs. It's not something they can sit at home and do. So manual labor as well, so trying to raise money for people in that community who are also struggling. Um, so it kind of covers the board from doctors, supplies, homeless people, hunger, um, people who are struggling to eat, people who are out of work across to the music community and people who are out of work there. So kind of dividing it up and just trying to do as much as you can whenever you can. And at the same time, you know, just do your push-ups every day, do your exercises, whatever the fuck it is. You know, I, I tend to do stuff every day anyway. So again, I'm super lucky. I'm used to working from home. So it's just an extended working from home period for me. And of course, touring all of that stuff stalls and you know that's income but I'm all right for now so you know figuring so fans, it out fans can see you playing uh on Instagram lives at Sundays at five is kind of your normal time yeah sticking to it sticking like to it that. um well, yeah I hope everyone tunes in I will check you out this Sunday Tatiana De Maria thank you so much it was good to see you again thank you appreciate it it's lovely to see you again and take care stay safe 